If you are brand new to Close CRM or just starting out, this video will save you at least 50 hours of time as I've been developing the exact account structure that I'm going to walk you through today over the last six years as Close CRM's number one partner. But first, my name is Sam Queen. I'm with the Close Doctor team, and I help online service-based businesses with high-ticket offers scale to seven and eight figures using what we call our systems-based selling strategies. So if you're looking to have a custom-built CRM like this with a sales operator like myself sitting inside your business, I'll leave a link down in the description below so you can book a call with me or someone on my team. On that call, we will map your sales process inside of your Close CRM account, and you'll probably end up leaving me a review something like these. Check out Gary, who said, I can't believe you do this for free. Griffin, who said, you make it easy to do it on your own. And my mom, who said, I don't understand what you do for work. So why is this the best tutorial for closed CRM beginners? Because we're going to cover creating an account from scratch, which CRM plan is going to be best for your business, all of the must-have settings you need to have turned on inside of your account, how to import and create leads, the different lead statuses and pipeline stages you should have, how to actually map and create custom activities for your sales motion, how to organize your data and map your custom fields, creating workflows with texts, emails, and calls from scratch, building a day-to-day, -day, a foolproof process for your sales reps using smart views, and finally, how a sales rep can get the most out of their account. Now let's dive into the screen share. Stop using slow cluttered CRMs. I haven't seen this on Close's page before. I don't know who wrote it. I think they nailed it. it encompasses what Close CRM is all about. Let's try for free. We're gonna go with don't have an account, sign up. If you've already done this, skip forward to this timestamp on your screen right here. First name, Sam, last name, Queen, email. After you put in your email and password, you'll be brought to this screen to connect with Google if you use Gmail as your email service provider. I'm not going to do this step right now, but if you are on the screen, you definitely want to connect this. This is how you're going to sync all of your emails with your contacts that exist inside the CRM. So I'll press, I'll do this later. Please verify your email. Email has been verified. Let's put in our phone number. What do I hope to do during this trial? Improve my sales and inbound process. Company name, close doctor, website, www closedoctor.com. How big is your company? We'll pretend it's just me. How big is your sales team? Just me. What space are you in? Marketing, we'll call it. And where are your leads? Let's say I don't have any. Finish that up and we should get brought inside. Here we are inside of a brand new close account with 14 days left on our trial. That takes care of the first point on our list of account creation from scratch. Number two on our list, which plan is going to be best for you? So I'm going to go over to settings and then plan down here at the bottom. And I'll toggle over to monthly since that's how most people will sign up for a CRM or a new tool. And we see that our startup plan starts at $59 a month, professional at $109, enterprise at $149. There are no minimum number of users on here, which I think is excellent. So you can be on enterprise with one user. You can be on startup with one user. It does not matter. The plan that I recommend is definitely not startup plan. I think the startup plan for a closed account doesn't really let you do much of anything at all. Five workflows, you're probably going to end up using more than that. Cool, you get the power dialer. That's nice. But you don't get any custom activities. Your usage limits are way lower with what you can create as far as pipeline goes and tracking goes. At a minimum, I recommend everyone use at least the professional plan for closed CRM. No, it's not the cheapest solution on the market, but I do think it is the easiest and fastest to use. And then all of my accounts, all of my client accounts actually use the enterprise plan, which allows us to use more than five custom activities. When I explain how to use them later on in this video, you'll understand why. If you're looking for a more detailed video on closed CRM pricing, check out this video on your screen here, where I break down all of the plans, features, and benefits. The third thing on our list is going to be the must-have settings you should have inside of your CRM. We'll start from the top and go down. Account, nothing to do in here. Memberships, nothing to do in here. General, you can change your currency if you're not in the US. Team management, user groups you can create. If you have setters and closers, I recommend you create a group for setters. You assign which users are a setter. And then additionally, you create a group for closers and you assign the users that are closers. And when you want to round robin or filter for leads or data in the future, you'll be able to select a user group versus selecting all the individual users that have that certain role or job title in your business. You can also create custom roles and permissions. I highly recommend you do this. You can call this setter or sales team or closer if they have different roles and permissions. And you want to prevent your team from doing things like bulk edit and bulk delete, bulk import probably. All things that could sacrifice or compromise the account structure in your account, you actually want 
want to leave up to your admins, and you can customize and then assign those roles under team management after creating them. Your custom activities we're going to come back to in this video, custom fields as well. Custom objects, you can check them out. They're in private beta right now. It's something that doesn't fit into an opportunity. Lead status or custom field, I typically don't see too many accounts using them. Shared fields, nothing to cover there. Integration links, nothing too much to cover here. Just know that you can set up a link on a profile like a Google search. One button on a profile that a person can click in order to conduct a Google search of that leads information just like that here. But once again, I don't see too many accounts doing that. Maybe a LinkedIn search as well. Scheduling links. Calendly has a native integration with Close CRM that you can integrate on this tab here, or you can add your other scheduling links if you use a tool like OneHub or Cal.com. I prefer to use OneHub. I think it's Apple versus Android. OneHub is definitely Android, but for scale, Android is going to be the better solution. Lead statuses, we're going to come back to phone and voicemail. This is where you're going to add your phone number. You definitely want each person on your team to do this. And if you're just starting out with your close CRM account, you definitely need to take care of your regulatory bundle and A2P registration. You can do that on this tab by clicking register. Close provides you all the information you need to successfully get all of your numbers registered. Just make sure you follow the process that's provided for you. Set up your abandonment message if you're going to be using the predictive dialer. This is going to be the feature that drops a voicemail or provides a message when your predictive dialer calls and two people pick up at the same time. One person you'll be connected with, the other person will receive that message. Your email, you can set up your email signature here. This is a must have setting templates and snippets. We can come back to when we talk about building workflows, send as if you want other users to send emails as you or send emails as each other, you can set that up here. Integrations. If you want to learn about the native integrations, you can do so on this tab. A lot of people use zoom. That's probably a must have one. Zapier is going to be a must have one and 90% of closed users use Calendly as well. That's going to be a must have integration accounts and apps. This is where you connect your Gmail account. If you did not do it in the onboarding sequence developer, this is where you'll create API keys if you need to build any custom integrations. We already talked about plan and then usage. One other I think must have feature that you should have turned on in your account is going to be the transcribe tool, which is not on the usage tab. It is on the plans tab. Turn on call assistant services. It's an extra $50 a month and then two cents per minute, whatever that works out to just over a dollar per hour. I think it's super worth it to have all your calls transcribed for you. And in addition, if you have this turned on, you can do cool things with the API to pull those transcripts. That takes care of the third part of our list today with must have CRM settings. Now let's get into the fourth part, which is importing and creating leads. I'm just going to show you how to manually create one for the time being. You do so right here by clicking this plus sign. This is where you add company name or what close refers to as a lead. This is where you add contact name or what close refers to as a contact. And when you create the lead, you'll then see that our company name will live in the top left. Our contact will live over here in the left middle. And this is where you can add phone numbers as well as email addresses. Now on to the fifth part of our list, creating lead statuses and pipeline stages. The statuses that close recommends default out of the box to me are very close to being the exact statuses that I see in 90% of the accounts that we build. Where people will get carried away is they'll build 20 lead statuses, 30 lead statuses. And there's different ways to segment leads inside of close when it comes to filtering for the data that you're looking for. A lead status represents a lead's current relationship to your company. That should be a 30,000 foot overview on the lead and their relationship to your company. Because when you're on a lead profile, you see it at the top left. It's right in front of your face. It's really quick to get a glance of, okay, this new lead from Google is a potential lead. The default lead statuses are potential, bad fit, qualified, customer, interested, canceled, not interested. The lead statuses that I typically like to see are potential, qualified, not qualified. So probably consider the bad fit out of the box. Interested, I don't do. Customer, I'll keep canceled. If this is like a canceled customer, I will use this, right? But not like a canceled call or this may be active versus not active customer we'll get rid of not interested and we'll add dnc for a do not call so in order that would read like potential qualified not qualified customer canceled customer dnc super super basic super high level only six in this account from a beginner level you are a beginner watching this do not get carried away here 
And then once again, I do believe the opportunity pipeline default out of the box of demo completed proposal sent contract sent one loss, depending on your sales cycle. This makes sense a little bit more for a software sales cycle because we're sending over proposals or at least a process that comes with proposals, which I only see in about 50% of the businesses that we work with. Maybe we add a additional pipeline stage as potential. If you ever need to rearrange them, you can drag them just like this here. And if you're looking for a more deeper understanding, a better way to map what your sales process looks like, check out this video on your screen here on how to map your sales process as one of the very early ones I built for this channel. And it teaches you from a principle level, a principle approach on what your pipelines and custom activities should look like inside of your account. Speaking of custom activities, number six on our list, I think custom activities are the backbone inside of a closed CRM account when used the right way. You can think of them just like a form. If you go to new activity type, I can create a new activity for my custom activities. And this may be activity type, be a drop down single select. And maybe this is someone joining our, my Facebook group, or this is someone watching my case study, or this is someone submitting website form. I'll talk to you about how to map those forms right after this part of this video. And then we can add another field of date of activity. We can do this as a date field. Now we can automate inside of Zapier, which I'm not going to show inside this video because this is our beginner tutorial video. If you want to see more Zapier tutorials, let me know down below, comment down below. I can go new activity and say we automated this information coming in. We would start to be able to create a paper trail with these custom activities on how a lead is interacting with all of our sales and marketing material. So these custom activities might get all the way built out like zero one new activity at the top of funnel. Maybe zero two is then a book to triage call or whatever you call that in your process. And then you can create this form with a user showing a lead owner and anything you put in this, you can actually filter for in the future. You can add the date of the call, so on and so forth. Maybe any other booking information, lead source information, maybe the date they actually booked the call. And now if you once again, automate that from maybe Calendly or Once Hub, you'll see that, okay, this lead on 619 joined our Facebook group. On 621, they submitted a website form. And then on 626, they booked a call with Sam Queen. And you're gonna be able to start to see that paper trail on how a lead has interacted with your sales process. Once again, check out this video on your screen for more in-depth on how to actually use and leverage custom activities inside of your closed CRM account. Number seven on our list is going to be how to map custom fields. I will not go into the step-by-step -step nitty gritty of this, but right now I'll cover with you that there are lead custom fields, contact custom fields, and opportunity custom fields. A lead custom field will live right here. A contact custom field would live within here. And then an opportunity custom field would live within the opportunity here. And it's super important to note with custom fields that you're bringing in the data the right way. If you're bringing in a date and you want to be able to filter for dates in the future, make sure the type of your custom field is a date custom field type. If you're bringing in a number, make sure your type is a number type. Because when you go to create smart views in the future and you want to filter for the date of a call inside of custom activity, then you must have those fields as a date field, which will then allow you to filter by days ago, days from now, this year, next month. If that were a text field, you would not have that capability. Same thing goes for multiple choice. If you want to bring in multiple choice data and it's a single select, bring that data in as a drop down single select, add answer choice one, add answer choice two. And then in the future, you'll be able to filter by this data if you want to segment leads. Number eight on our list of 10 is going to be workflows. These were previously known as sequences inside of closed CRM. Before that, they were previously known as nothing. This is definitely still a work in progress for close as a CRM account, as a CRM company, but the strides that they're making here are tremendous lately, and I'm really loving it. Say we want to build a workflow for our leads that opt in and don't book a call. Check out this video here on your screen on my top five CRM workflows. I'll go in depth on how to actually set up the Zapier trigger for an opt in, didn't book a call workflow in addition to my other four favorite workflows that I put inside of every account. And when it comes to editing workflows, we have a goal at the top of incoming email, incoming SMS, incoming call. This means your workflow will turn off when one of these things happen. I recommend you just leave this the way it is. You can change your communication schedule over here. I never select Sunday. I do select Saturday and the sending time window is fine. Maybe you can extend this a little bit if you'd like. Our different types of trigger steps are manual and automated. I really don't see too many people using too many of the automated triggers yet. 
content because they're so limited, but you can do an automated trigger based off of a lead status changing, which is nice. And then as far as our steps go, we can add email templates, SMS templates, we can add call steps, we can assign users, we can create a task and very new feature, we can actually update a lead status, which is pretty cool. Say a lead gets to the end of a workflow and you want it to go from potential to not qualified because they didn't reply at all, you can have that automatically update that lead status. Let me show you guys the template builder here for emails. This is where you name your template and you want to use naming conventions because close does not offer folders yet. So you definitely want to name your templates the same way every single time. If it's going into a workflow and this is the first email of our opt-in workflow, I might just go opt-in one. And then we have template tags here at the bottom and we can use contact first name. So maybe we can go, hey, contact first name in the subject line. Then you can do it's, we'll do user first name here with, and I think we can do company name. No, we don't have company name in here. That's okay. You could probably just write your company. Close doctor. Just like any other email builder. You can add images, you can add links, you can format your text. And in addition, you can even add an unsubscribe link now to protect your email. Right here is where you wanna change who's actually sending the workflow. I do a signed user in a custom field because I'm always bringing a lead owner into a custom field. So that would look like this here. Then after pressing done on your next steps, let's choose to add an SMS. We can delay here for any amount of time, days or hours. We can delete delay entirely and actually have this SMS sent right after. And then just like we built an email template, we can grab an SMS template as well to throw in here. Just about wrapping up here with you guys. Number nine, how to create a foolproof day-to-day -day with SmartViews. SmartViews are filters for clothes. I treat them like they're buckets. And that's the methodology and the principle that I think you should use as well. So a bucket fills up and then you want to build the smart view to where when that action takes place, the bucket actually empties. An example could be show me all of the leads that were created today that I have not called. So I would go into leads, add filter, we would search created where date created is today. And then we'll go calls and see that total number of calls is less than one. Here are the three leads that were created today that have less than one call today. If I go inside of this Google profile, I can see that that's true. If I log a call, I should be able to go back to that same smart view and see that Google has disappeared. And that is the bucket principle or the bucket methodology. So when I then save that, I can do zero one, today's leads need first call. Maybe I'll add an emoji. Once again, close does not have folders for smart views. So I like to use an emoji, maybe for a blue for setters and orange for closers, number the smart view, and then you can share with everyone everyone or specific users across the ecosystem. Then you would build the second smart view, the third smart view, the fourth smart view, showing lowest hanging fruit or highest priority down to lowest priority for a sales team. And if you build everything like a bucket, as long as the leads have disappeared from the smart view shown, you know that your sales team has performed the desired action inside of your sales process. If you're looking for that process to be mapped for you, I'll do it with you on the call for free. Link down in the description below. And last but not least, how a sales rep should actually approach their day. Sales team should start inside of their inbox. If you use a Google calendar and you rely on that to show your appointment times and you're not using this meetings inside of close CRM, then your Google calendar is your first priority. Making sure you're to your committed meetings on time, then working out of your inbox. Inside of close, you have a unified inbox. You have a built-in dialer, built-in email, which is awesome. So you can see all your emails, texts, calls, SMS, and tasks in one place. After clearing out an inbox, a sales rep should be working out of workflows. If your work workflows have call steps within them like this. Those call steps can be required or optional. You can once again add a delay. Those calls will show up when they are due inside of this workflow screen. There'll be a little button here that says start calling. Maybe it'll say you've called zero out of 74 leads that need a call. You'll click one button to start calling and it will call all 74 of those leads in a row. I think it's wonderful. It makes it really easy to work through your CRM account. I see top sales reps inside of top refined close CRM accounts hitting two 250 dials a day. If you build your account the right way, your team will be able to do the same. And then after they have worked their Google Calendar, they've cleared out their inbox, they've made their dials from their workflows, they're then going to go through their smart views and start clearing out their buckets. If there are leads inside of those smart views, here's Wayne Enterprises. We give Wayne a call, pretend. We click down here, we go to our next lead, we give them a call, pretend. We go back to the smart view, there are no more leads inside of here. I know I've called all the leads that were created today that needed a call. And if I had 10 more smart views, I would then go through the remaining 10.
There you have it. Tutorial and step-by-step -step for beginners. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos. Thanks and I'll catch you in the next one.